Hello, my name is Jim Dixon. I'm one of the faculty team for the Computer Systems Technician Program, and I'm going to give you some information about that program today. First of all, a little bit about the program name. You can see that the name is quite the mouthful, and you can find many different programs named Computer Systems Technician at various colleges around the province that teach different subject matter. Information Technology Infrastructure and Services, or ITIS, describes exactly what the program's all about. You'll learn about non-software development area of information technology, which we'll get into in a minute. I also want to mention the IT Support Services program, since you might be familiar with ITSS, since we've been delivering that for years. Computer Systems Technician is the new name for what was ITSS, and that starts in fall 2020. The program is much the same as what ITSS was. We've just updated the program to the latest ministry standards, and that includes changing the name. So why would you want to get into the ITIS program? And to look at that, it helps to know a little bit about what our graduates do once they're finished. In our field, you work with networking equipment, server hardware and software, cloud computing systems, end user devices, that type of a thing. The way that I often describe this is we provide and support the infrastructure required for products produced by software developers. That includes the architecture and design all the way through to fixing problems that occur within the infrastructure. This is a great field for anyone who's interested in IT, but isn't really interested in programming. I've been working in this field for over 35 years now, and I still find this pretty exciting. This is a field where things change constantly. There's new products every day. Our challenge is to select the right products and make them work for the organization. We're constantly planning, building, and solving problems. So if you're the kind of person who likes to be creative, likes to be innovative, likes to solve problems, this is a great field and program for you to get into. ITIS is a bring your own device program. In other words, you need your own laptop. There's a web page on the Conestoga site that states you need the better configuration and describes what that means. But I wanna add some information that is specific to our program. First of all, you can run Windows or Mac. Either one of those is fine. The website says that you need parallels if you're using a Mac and that is not true for our program. Second item is the amount of memory. So the website states a gigabytes minimum and preferred is 16. I can tell you that for our program, you really want to have 16 gigabytes of memory. Otherwise, you're not going to get the performance that you're gonna be looking for to complete your work. And along with that is a recommendation on the website for solid state versus mechanical storage. And again, from a performance perspective, I'm gonna tell you that you really want to have solid state. One of the other items is minimum of 15 inch screen size. And in this program, generally, the more real estate you have on the screen, the better off you, you're going to be. Having said that, we have plenty of students who use a 13 inch screen and rapidly flip back and forth between different applications. If that's something that you're totally comfortable with, that is no problem. Couple of other items. Again, the website says that you need wireless networking, which of course every laptop has these days, and wired networking is optional. In our case, you need both. So if you're, in our case, you need both. So if your laptop does not have a wired network connection, you'll need to get an adapter for that. And also from a hardware perspective, you will have to have a webcam. Last thing that I want to address with this is the time that it takes to repair your laptop. The, the last thing I want to address here is the time it takes to repair your laptop if it fails. In many cases, a warranty is going to require you to mail your laptop away and you'll get it back in a few weeks. 
since you use your laptop every day in this program, that's not really going to be a good option. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever you do from a warranty perspective, you're going to be able to get any kind of failures fixed within a day or so. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our learning environment. And the program, of course, is delivered at our Waterloo campus. Here's a view of our networking lab from our Here's a view of our networking lab up of the Waterloo campus. This is generally the same as most of the different rooms that you would be taking your courses in. Wanted to point out that there is power and wired network connection in all of our different rooms and labs. This one has our data center connected to the back and I'm going to give you a view of that. So you can see here that we have a ton of networking equipment that is available for our students to use for learning and assignments and other study purposes. One of the things, if I back out here a little bit, and this is pretty tough to see because of the reflection in the right-hand window, but our private cloud environment is sitting behind there. And that private cloud environment using industry standard software is where all of your systems work would be completed, meaning uh, we work in a virtual environment from that standpoint. Also want to point out that this equipment is completely accessible externally. So if you're working on assignments or lab work, what have you, and you would like to work from home rather than coming into the college environment itself, you're absolutely able to do that. Next thing I want to take a look at is what kind of jobs can you be looking at once you finish the program? And this is pretty varied. I've broken this down into a few general types of positions. And I'm not including job titles because in this industry, they are almost meaningless. I've seen the same job title used in different companies where the people working with that title are doing some fairly different things. And the amount that you get paid is quite different as well. So the first type of position I want to look at is quite common, and that is working on a support team. That means you spend much of your time solving problems every day. And in the IT field, support teams are often tiered, and that varies from one company to another. Generally, tier one works on the less challenging problems, and the more difficult problems get escalated up to as high as in tier four in some organizations. This is a great choice for a job if problem solving is your thing. Another type of position that is quite common is administration. And although problem solving is still involved, much of your time is also spent working on creating, configuring, and maintaining IT infrastructure. Sometimes that work is specialized in one area, such as networking, for example, Sometimes you work on everything. And these jobs also often have junior and advanced 
And these jobs often have junior and advanced positions and in some cases intermediate. So there's great opportunity for job growth within organizations. Field work is a great opportunity for those who like to get out and meet people and don't like to spend their time in an office. So this can involve working for a product vendor where you're visiting both prospective and existing clients. You might be visiting customers to help determine the best product to fit their needs, installing products, supporting products, that type of a thing. Or you could be working for an outsourcer that provides contracted third-party support for products and services. So for example, companies like Dell will subcontract to local organizations to provide warranty service in the field for their customers. Last one I want to look at is analysis and design. This is typically not the type of job that you start right of school. This is typically the not, oh this is typically not the job that you start right of school. Oh man. This is typically not the job that you start right out of school since you need some experience to get to this level. Uh, if you like the challenge of analyzing an abstract problem, developing a requirement, developing a solution, you'll like this type of work. You can do this type of work in-house in larger organizations, or you could be working for an organization providing consulting services, and those consulting companies can be anywhere from tiny to huge. You can work for just about any type of company that you'd like in this particular IT field. Some of our graduates work in insurance for companies like Manulife and Cooperators, manufacturing like ATS and Linamar, banking like TD and CIBC, logistics like Loblaws, hospitals, health associations, school boards, universities, colleges, security firms like Ecentire and Arctic Wolf, and that's just a few in our geographic area. I'd like to try to answer a few of your questions. So these are some of the questions that are most frequently asked about the ITIS program. These aren't ranked in any order, but having said that, almost everyone asks if the program is hard. And I will tell you it is challenging. You'll have to do some good work to do well. Also though, ITIS is designed to be very accessible from the perspective that you can start with no knowledge. So you don't have to be that person who spent all of your high school days buried in a computer. As long as you're willing to do some hard work, you can be very successful in this program. Another common question is, do I have to start my first job at tier one help desk? In other words, do I have to start at the bottom? And the answer to that is no. Where you start is really up to you primarily. Hard work and a passion for excellence is something that's recognized during interviews when you're trying to land a job. And many of our graduates start with jobs that are higher than the lowest level. Next question on my list is, can I get a good job if I don't do co-op? And the answer to that is absolutely you can. Many of our graduates do exactly that. Participating in co-op adds some direct experience to your resume, which is obviously a good thing. But not participating in co-op is rarely the deciding factor on whether you get a job that you apply for. Many people ask if there is much hands-on work, and the answer to that question is absolutely yes. ITIS is a very applied program. Although there are things you have to know, it's what you can do that's even more important. And the level of practical skills our grads have once they finish the program is one of the key elements that makes them very attractive to companies looking to hire. And the final question we'll look at, is there anything I can do to continue my studies once I could? The final question that we'll look at is, is there anything I can do to continue my studies once I complete ITIS? And a common approach to that is to specialize in a particular area by completing a graduate certificate program. An example of that would be our IT network security program, and you can likely guess that that involves infrastructure security. These programs are typically two semesters in length. They provide postgraduate level education in a specific subject area. 
Some of our graduates take this approach when they have a keen interest in a particular area of specialization and they liked a little bit more education in a specialized area before heading out into the workforce. That brings us to the information I have for you about the ITIS program. If you have any additional questions, please feel more than welcome to email me at the address you see here. And thanks for your interest in the ITIS program.